Crap with Beth and Matt. Cut to Crap is the world's number one no bullshit health and fitness podcast. What's up, you guys? Welcome to another episode of Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt. The theme of this episode is balance. We speak with registered dietitian Jamie all about building a balanced plate, balance with health and fitness, balance with work, and that balance looks different for everyone. Let's get into it. Hello. Hey. Hi, Jamie. Hi. 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 Doing well. How are you? Good. Uh, nice to meet you. Glad, glad to talk yeah. to you today. Thanks for coming yeah, on. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. Cool. Um, I'm excited too. What's what's up in uh you're up in New England, if I'm not mistaken, right? New England. Yes, yeah, so I'm in Massachusetts. Yeah. Gotcha. Oh, neighbor. I'm in Maine. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's cold. Yes. <laughs> Do you have all that snow as well, like Beth does? Not any it it all kind of went away a couple of days ago, yeah. but we did have a little bit. Yeah. Now it's just freezer yeah it, it turned to ice it was like rained and then it's ice and now it's freezing yeah gotcha. where where are you Matt I'm in Ohio um northwest Ohio more specifically and it's been such a mild winter we haven't had any snowfall accumulation yet this this winter it snowed like twice just flurries um it's been cold this last week but then today it's up over 30 so it's like wow it's- hoodie weather all, all almost every day you yeah know, I couple. see you walking and I'm like you're just wearing a hoodie right now <laughs> well it was, I, a, it was I, a hoodie I, plus I, a north, a north face jacket that jacket's very warm so <laughs> <laughs> um all right so Jamie what's been going on with you are you working on anything exciting right now um am I working on anything exciting right now I don't know I have I, I'm mostly just um I have a membership program so I'm mostly just working on that Saw that. And yes, so mostly just working on that. I have some fun stuff coming in there soon and just, you know, working on content, putting out some good stuff. Yeah, cool. you got some good content. Um, I want to ask you, so <laughs> how did you decide to become a dietitian and then start this membership program? I'd love to hear all about it. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. So um, I had my, I mean, I've had my own little journey with food and nutrition. So when I was younger, I struggled a bit with weight fluctuations and just not feeling super comfortable in my body. I did not have healthy habits. I didn't even really know what healthy habits were. (laughs) Um, And so I started my own little um, experience with dieting and things like that. I did all the typical things that people do, um, you know, it's trying not to eat as much, trying to eat nothing, (laughs) counting calories really obsessively, like all of the Mm. things. Um, And quickly realized that none of that worked, none of that helped. Um, I think if anything, it made me feel more out of control with food than I already did. And that's what um, made me start kind of researching nutrition. I was really interested in learning, like, how do you actually do this? How do you really build sustainable nutrition habits? And I decided to become a registered dietitian. So I went to school and even through learning, even through going to school, I, for nutrition, I quickly learned that you cannot take every single piece of nutrition information and apply it to your life. You just can't, you can't do everything and you, you're never going to be perfect. So that really sort of solidified how I had already felt about nutrition. And then I was just thinking about this. I so I used to work in more, I've been a dietitian for over seven years now. So I didn't start, I didn't start having my own, by having my own business. I worked in a more clinical setting for a long time. And even working in that setting, you see sick people who really would benefit a lot by making certain changes to their diet and lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And even telling people who are really sick and are at a more like, um, immediate need of changes, telling them don't eat sugar or don't Mm. eat bread or whatever it is, it doesn't work. Even for someone who you would think would have like a more, you know, more motivation to do it health wise, it still doesn't work. Mm. So my, my point to all that is I learned so much working with so many different people around how important balance is and um somehow started my own business and i've been doing that for a few years now and yeah that's how that kind of came to be the membership came to be because i'm you know especially i'm sure both of you understand this too not everyone has the means to work one-on-one with someone and so 
over time, it was really important to me. I was, and I was also tired of turning people away. And I really wanted something more attainable for people, more, you know, easily accessible. And it's nice because it's a self-paced program. So yeah, that's, that's kind of how that came to be. Yeah. I love that (laughs) for sure. So um, I do love your name, the balanced nutritionist. Um, yeah. as, you know, that's one of our biggest models is everything in moderation and balance, finding what you enjoy, things like that. Um, but what, what does balance mean to you? I mean, cause for that means different things to different people, right? So I guess that's just working to find your own balance. You can't go off of somebody else's balance, right? Yeah, I think for sure. I think you just hit it. That's, that's really the key for me when it comes to balance is it's, And I think that's like the best part of that word is that it really looks different for everyone. Everyone's balance looks different Mm -hmm. in terms of food, in terms of your lifestyle, all of the things. Yeah. So um, when I think about balance, I think, I, I think it can be applied to so many different things. Like when I talk about setting up meals, I always talk about putting together a balance of nutrients on your plate. I think balance also applies to just you know, the stereotypical healthy foods in your life versus the not stereotypical healthy foods in your (laughs) life. Um, And then I think just the balance of like real life and also having goals for yourself and wanting to be healthy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, And you also mentioned then like a balanced plate in a way too. Um, Mm -hmm. What are some very general like suggestions you can help with people to understand what a balanced plate actually looks like? Because yeah. Yeah. You know, um, we might, maybe we don't know because um, that's really a, a really big um, foundational building block, right? For, for us to, to start this journey. Yeah, definitely. When I think about, I think it can, it, it's, it's one of those things that, I mean, just like anything else, I think balanced meals look different for everybody. Everybody needs a different amount of food, which I think is really hard, a hard concept to ex- accept because everyone wants to hear like, no, just tell me exactly what to and I will eat it but that's not true so I think um so anyway the way that I like to talk about balanced meals is prioritizing a good protein source um having at least you know a source of carbohydrate on your plate it doesn't have to be a massive portion of carbohydrate um but having something on your plate for carbohydrate and then I like to think about having color on your plate so lunch and dinner that tends to look like vegetables Mm -hmm. and for breakfast that's more likely to be fruit or 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 not um especially with carbs I think it seems like a less important piece of the plate to people like but it always ends up in two places I was just talking about this this morning with a client it's either you're totally overeating carbs or you're skipping carbs because you think it's healthier when really the place to be is including carbs regularly right. every yeah. single day kind of consistently and yeah yeah the fear of carbs is real <laughs> so. it's yeah <laughs> it's it's really i mean I've worked with people that haven't had a potato in like five years. Wow. And mm-hmm. the potato is the most it, like satisfying, um, yeah. you know, that hurts my food heart. To eat. Really, yeah, it did hurt my heart. So how do you help people overcome, you know, that fear um, of that? Yeah, that's a, I, that's a good question. I think it's, it's super hard. I think, and I think the best, and I, I love doing this with literally any food is, once you've struggled with food for so long, there's literally you you have nothing to lose by trying something new. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're already feeling so, you know, out of control around food or whatever the case may be. So especially with carbs, I think, um, even just experimenting for a few days with a certain amount of carb at each meal or whatever, or snacks or um, depending on the situation can be really helpful just to build some confidence with carbs. And I think it also shows you that the world doesn't end. (laughs) If you eat carbs, you're not going to gain 10 pounds in a week if you eat carbs. Mm -hmm. Um, And they really can be helpful. So I really think the experience piece is so important because you can tell somebody carbs don't make you fat every, you you know, a million times, but until they're living it and experiencing it and seeing it for themselves, that it's not scary, then um, it's not going to (laughs) happen. See it firsthand, learn by doing, right? Yeah. Yep. What's uh, your favorite? Yeah. Your what's your favorite all time carb? Whether it's a, a a fruit or a vegetable or whatever, you know. What's my favorite carb? I enjoy a lot of different carbs. Um, I really, yeah. I'm definitely, I really love potatoes. 
Mm-hmm. I'm actually not, I like pasta, but it's not, I would say pasta is not my favorite carb of all time. I would say okay. um, p- potatoes and I'm a big bread fan. And I also love donuts. So yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Whenever I, I travel, I always look up the best donut place. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a Have you heard of a Holy Donut in uh, the Portland main area? I have I have heard of it, but I haven't I been. Oh, so good. If you ever get to Portland, definitely check out the Holy Donut. They're made it's made with potatoes actually. Potato. Um, really? Really? Yeah. They're for like potato donuts. They're the best. That yeah. blows my mind, but I need it now. <laughs> right. I will well, travel to Maine food, so. and you will be getting some, some holy donut, Matt. I, uh, it, down in Austin, Texas, there's a place called Voodoo Donuts, if I'm not mistaken. They've got mm-hmm. some pretty wild donuts down there. They're super yes. fun. It's like yeah. you, they sell out. It's almost right away when they open up. I'm a simple donut person. I judge every single donut place based on their glazed donut. Okay. <laughs> yes, <Fair>. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure have you there's this local um sports bar hole in the wall place that makes a cheeseburger but the bun is with a glazed donut have, have you ever heard oh. of anything like that mm. it's it's honestly it's like perfection it's and they put bacon it, of I have, it. so mm. it's, it's yeah so i've heard of, i've i've heard of it before but i've never tried anything like it <laughs> <laughs> add that to the list maybe <laughs> <laughs> So do you now, find oops, sorry you go, no, you're good, you go ahead Matt. nope all you I insist. <laughs> do you find so i i find like a lot of people have the all or nothing mentality right do you uh, how do you yeah how do you handle that with uh clients yeah i think that piece is that's it <laughs> that's one of i think that's the hardest yeah. i think that's the hardest piece of um i think it's the hardest piece of getting away from really strict dieting in general is when you, when you diet and you see really short-term results, it just, it sticks you right into that way of thinking of like, if I'm, if I'm not doing it all, and if I'm not doing everything exactly perfect, then I'm not going to see any results or whatever. So it's hard. I think it, I think again, it's just come down to really working at it every single day. And it takes, it also takes time too. So mm-hmm. like, I, I also think it's, there's something to be said about, again, letting go of, perfection and accepting that you're still going to have days you're going to have you might start off great and then have a day where you totally go off the rails and you feel like you're starting right back at square one and I think you have to keep going and you have to keep trying to break that cycle whenever you can and every time you break the cycle hopefully it's faster and better and um, you can keep going from it so it's the hardest piece for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're stuck in that sort of all or nothing thinking, but I think the best thing to think about is it's going to take time, but every single time you break that cycle is going to, you're going to be better for it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I think too, what, what helps, you know, we could, we could be considered what like influencers, we influence people. Right. So what helps then is uh, talking with uh, people too on our social media platforms about our own struggles with that type of stuff too, right? Because we've lived it. Mm-hmm. So now we're we're coming from a place of our own experience and our education too. So now we can speak firsthand about it. Yeah, def- definitely. For sure. I think everyone, and I think especially the all or nothing type of thinking, I think can apply to so many different pieces of life. Mm-hmm. Like we always feel like you have to to be doing exactly the right thing all the time so right. yeah for sure super relatable and then it's yeah, also it's, like uh has that worked for you up to this point you know depending on how old they are and where they're at in their life i mean obviously if they're talking to you um they've probably been doing that their entire life so it's maybe it's time to just be a little bit uncomfortable and try something new instead of the same old stuff right Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I love using that line. Is, is it work? Has it worked for you yet? <laughs> I, yeah. I think it's the best question because the answer is always no. Um, that's why you're where yeah. you are. Mm-hmm. And it's not. And also, I think it's the other piece, too, is it's not just that one person. It's literally everyone. This happens yeah. pretty much pretty like I think there's a couple of different there's like two two paths for when you start dieting you either stay dieting pretty much forever or you get sucked into this all or nothing cycle of spending your whole life on and off diets 
So I think also recognizing that it's super normal to be yeah. placed and it's not their fault. It's, 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 it's diet culture. Diet culture. <laughs> yeah. for sure. Yes, diet freaking culture is loud. I feel like it's a war zone out there. It is. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> yeah, especially on TikTok, the comment sections. Uh, <laughs> oh, is, gosh. It's in, is intense. Like the, between the people that are like processed, everything is processed and everything has chemicals uh, or, you know, uh, a Pop Tart is worse than dates. Um, how can you tell that person it's okay to have a pop tart with all the chemicals? Um, it's crazy. It's, it's really, it's, it's, uh, it's wild. I actually started on, uh, I started on Instagram. I don't know. I don't know where both of you started. I started on so Instagram yep. and the only reason, the only reason I joined TikTok actually was because I didn't have the music feature in Instagram. So I used TikTok <laughs> as a way to film reels. This is honest. I had no desire to join TikTok at all. And then like I, you know, my videos picked up, which was really awesome, except I was like, what is happening? The, <laughs> I had never experienced anything like that on Instagram. And yeah. then I went over to TikTok and it was just like this. I had never experienced that level of like diet culture and people arguing that, that those types of things. It was, it was wild, but I, I feel very used to it now. Yeah. The Instagram Un unfortunately. Oh, so, yeah. That's not a good thing. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're numb to it now. Yeah. I'm definitely I numb to it now. I feel like the Instagram comment section is a lot calmer than the TikTok comment se section for sure. For sure. It's much, it's much calmer, but it's getting worse because I think your stuff gets shown to more people now and that's mm -hmm. an unfortunate. So it definitely is getting worse, I will say, but um, yeah, it's wild and it's tough too, because I, and I always say this to my audience too, like I, mm -hmm. I'll call out specific comments sometimes because I think it's so important to say like, this is not true or this is mm -hmm. totally misinformation because I know that they're reading the comment sections. I read the comment sections on posts. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're reading the comment section and taking in this horrible information yeah. that's put out there. Yeah, you definitely have to um, respond in some way to some of those comments. Obviously, you can't respond to all of them because then you you would be insane. You would drive yourself insane, I think. You just not enough time in the day either, unfortunately. Because um, if you mm -hmm. do just let it go unchecked, that's when it becomes misinformation spreads like wildfire. That's why some of the mm -hmm. biggest health and fitness, I use that term loosely, accounts on social media are the ones that are spreading all this misinformation because it's just so easy for them to do whether they're doing it intentionally or not i think a lot of them are doing it just for you know the money and the clicks and everything so it's crazy mm. people fall for the negativity more than the positivity yeah for sure because i think especially with diets and any type of eating people I think you, you want to be told, and I, this goes for anything. I can, you know, I can think of lots of things in my own life where I'm like, no, just tell me what to do. Right. I just want to know exactly how to do this. And I think it's no different with food. People want you to, you know, you want to hear like, eat this food, this food, and this food, and don't eat this food, this food, and this food. But black and white. when it comes to, a, yeah, but when it comes to applying it, it's just, it doesn't work that way. Yeah. Because we... I mean, me personally, um, when I'm told, when I give this plan, like I, I naturally want to rebel against it. And that, I think that's just human nature too. Um, you know, mm -hmm. there's so many, you know, movies and songs about not doing what you tell me and this and this and this, like, we're just, we're, <laughs> we're just going to rebel just, just to rebel sometimes too many rules. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. What were you going to say, Beth? I was going to say that sometimes I think like people like to follow the rules because they don't feel so out of control. And when you have like a rule to follow, it's like, oh, I, I can ha I can only eat this, this, and this, and this. But when they're left to their own demise, they feel out of control. Exactly, for sure. I think every you you want a plan, and I think that's mm -hmm. so reasonable to want a plan. But yeah. um, it's just it doesn't work that way. And it's when there are going to be moments where you have to make decisions independently, and if you can't do that, you're just going to be right back where you started, and you're going to feel crappy that you couldn't do it. And then mm -hmm. you're going to feel worse and not try at all. So yeah. yeah. 
I, I don't, I feel like a lot of people don't realize how much more their mindset is involved in the whole thing rather than actually following. You can, you can give someone the perfect plan, but it's really their mindset. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mindset is, it's such a huge underrated piece about, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, it's, it's such a, it's such an underrated piece. I was just doing, I just did a call today that was on, um, what I called the four healthiest habits. And I talked about one consistent balanced meals, two, um, movement, three was sleep and stress and four was mindset and reflection. And I feel like those last two pieces, like managing, getting good quality sleep, managing your stress, making sure your mindset is in a good place and reflecting on everything you're doing. If you're not doing those pieces, forget it. None of you're going to have space for anything else. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Especially with the sleep and the stress, because those two things, they go hand in hand. You know, if mm -hmm. you're stressed, you're likely not going to sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're going to be more stressed. It's a, uh, you're yeah. no. And then forget about eating healthy foods or preparing food. Forget it. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Because of our, our, um, drilling and things like that cortisol. Yeah. Yeah. For, and first, well, I think there's a few different pieces. Like there's definitely things happening in your body hormonally for sure. But then I always think about what's like stress, especially or sleep or a combination of both when you're tired and stressed out. No, you're not going to be like, let me spend 30 minutes in the kitchen. It's just True. not going to happen or, or go grocery or whatever it is. Last and then for sure, especially with poor sleep, your hunger hormone goes up, your satiety hormone goes down. And then, then you have your body really working against you. So, so many yeah. different pieces. For yeah. sure. And th yeah, I love that. You, those are pretty much the foundations right there. You know, you said movement mm -hmm. and, and, and the balanced plates and everything. That's if we could just get back to the, the foundations. Um, wow. I can't even imagine what the possibilities would be like and where would, what would be I know. Like, you know? Um, we yeah, didn't, we're going to have jobs though. I don't know what our job, jobs would be, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> I don't think we're there yet. I think yeah, we're good no, for now. No. <laughs> I think we have a long ways to go. Yeah. I'm, uh, unfortunately, but I yeah, agree. Like I, I'm such a big fan of just getting back to the basic things that make you feel good because the things that make you feel good are also the things that support you being your mm -hmm. healthiest, getting to a weight that is the best weight for you um, is really getting down to those basics. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think a lot of people want to always want to focus on things that really don't matter, like pre-workout. <laughs> it's like, it's mm -hmm. like, or like, should I, what should I eat before my workout or after my workout? Or, you know, if they're not sleeping, they don't need pre-workout. They need more sleep. <laughs> Yeah. I always ask people that question. Like w they're always asking me like about the best pre-workout. I'm like, well, first of all, why are you asking that? Because like, are you just not, are you tired throughout the day and you need that pick me up constantly? Like let's reverse that and see what's going on there. It's probably, you're, you're not sleeping right. You're not getting enough sleep or, or quality sleep. Um, you can't mask mm -hmm. that. You can mask it temporarily, but it, sooner or later is going to catch up with you. Yeah. That's such a good point. And I get the, I get similar. I don't get a lot of questions about pre-workouts because that's really not my jam, but <laughs> I get, I get lots of questions about things like, Oh, should I buy the, what are those What's super popular right now? The greens powders. Oh, should yeah. I use those every single day? And I, I honestly don't care if, if someone wants to use that or not. I think that okay. it's whatever. I don't think it's good. I don't think it's going to hurt. Um, I don't know how much it's going to do any, you know, long-term who knows, but I don't think it's going to hurt. But I care way more about, are you eating vegetables at your meals? Are you eating consistently? That stuff is so much more important than yeah. including a greens powder in your day. Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, we want that to be the solution though, right? That powder, uh, the pill, yes. uh, the pre-workout, any of this. And that's what mm -hmm. diet culture has been doing for decades now, right? Is selling that as the magical Definitely. fat loss pill or health pill, whatever it is. And we know if we were to package that up, package up an actual magical pill would be what you just talked about with the foundations, mm -hmm. but that, but that's not sexy. So <laughs> Ex I know exactly. Ex yeah, exactly. It's not exciting. Yeah. It's not shiny. <laughs> it's no shiny yeah. objects. Yeah. 
no, it's actually super boring, which I think is, you know, it's not, and it feels less tangible too. I think there's also something to be said about really tangible things <laughs> and they just feel good. They feel like you're doing something. Yeah. So it can, that part is hard too. Absolutely. Same thing. We, same thing with our, our workouts and our exercise, right? Well, at least when it comes to lifting weights, um, you know, if it's boring, you're, it's probably good. You don't need to be getting, changing up your exercises all the time, chasing that new thrill and learning a new movement. Um, just focus on five, six basic movements and get really good at them, the foundations, and you're going to be great. You're going to be better off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I think that's in, definitely with, I totally agree with that exercise. Um, and I think the same thing, it's the same thing with food for sure. It's I I'll get questions like I'm doing this, this, and this for a couple of weeks. Should I change anything? And I'm like, no, don't change anything. Just keep doing what you're doing and keep refining what you're doing. That's going to get you so much further than trying to change things up every time that you have a day that's off. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are always looking to want to do more. Is this all I'm going to do? It's like, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Keep doing. Mm -hmm. Keep doing it consistently. I think that makes you more in touch with yourself too, because you're not, now you're not getting that constant excitement and thrill. So you're yeah. going to have to, you're going to have to sit in your feelings a little bit more too, I think. Um, and maybe that's going to make you realize some, some stuff you've been ignoring, you know, some, some not pleasant stuff. Cause we don't want to talk about that or think about what could be actually happening behind the scenes. Yeah. I, you know, I totally agree with that too, especially when it, when it comes to, especially when it comes to like your habits around food and stuff like that. If you're constantly changing them or doing something, if you're on Weight Watchers one week and then you try and you're back on noon the next week and then you're doing keto and then you're doing intermittent fasting, if you're jumping all around, you are literally never going to get to the root of why those habit changes are so hard for you in the first place. Yeah. So I agree. I, the, again, the reflection piece is it's so huge. For yeah. sure. That's something I've been personally working on for the last couple of years is just a lot of mindset work journaling and, and just it's being like aware, that. especially like right now, what I'm working on is separating my ego, you know, and from everything else. And I guess it's my ego that's wanting to respond to this comment on TikTok, probably, uh, you know, mm -hmm. so <laughs> at least I'm aware yeah. of it. And then I can ask myself, well, do I really want to do this? You know, but <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so going back to, the misinformation and things like that. Would you, would you say that misinformation is one of the biggest barriers people have to just starting to build a sustainable, healthy lifestyle? I think it's, it's def it's a huge, huge piece of it for sure. Um, yeah, it, it definitely is. And I think, I think so much of the problem too, is that <clears throat> we're never exposed to real science-based <laughs> nutrition information. Yeah. We, unless unless you're following um people who are actually providing that but for the most part none of i mean i know that i didn't learn about things like this when i was younger my first experiences with nutrition were fully from you know family members going on diets and things like that so I remember Jenny yeah Clay you, growing up wow <laughs> yes yeah. yes for sure i was just yes Sometimes something, something will, ha will happen and I'm like, ah, yeah, I remember that. Like, that was terrible. Um, but yeah, I remember my like family members buying the like Limfast shakes yeah. or that's like, and then that's what you grow up with thinking that that's nutrition and that's healthy. Mm. So True. you grow up literally learning the wrong stuff about nutrition. Mm. And then unfortunately, even now there's, you know, there's so many people spreading bad information and then people are like, I don't know who to believe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember growing up, the only thing I ever remember growing up from being taught in school is the food pyramid. I think that's the only thing I ever, I ever even remember from, from elementary school. Um, definitely not like once we got into junior high and things like that, it was more, um, f physical education and, and sex ed and things like that, not nutrition. Yeah. Mm hmm. hmm that needs to be taught in schools, you know, like building a balanced plate, for instance, not, right. no one really knows. And I don't know, Jamie, if you run into this, but I have a lot of clients that were put on diets as young children, um, like eight and nine years old. And I have, oh, yeah. you know, um, so they have a lot of like 
past trauma, like years of consistent dieting since they were young. And I have also get DMs from parents still asking or talking about, you know, my child needs to lose weight. And um, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. How do you go about telling, you know, a parent who comes to you for something like that? Yeah, that part, that part's really big. I, per, I don't anymore. I will, because, because I work primarily with adult women. So I don't really get people who are looking for help for their kids, but I will mm -hmm. get a lot of I, what I do get a lot of from my clients from DMS. And I talk about this a lot actually is just the effect that your, you know, your upbringing has on how you feel and deal with food later. Like if you're someone who is, you know, brought to Weight Watchers meetings when you were 10 years old, like that is 100% going to affect you in your adult life around food and weight. Or um, even like lots of men will say like, my parents are a huge reason why I have a poor relationship with food because they would talk about my body constantly or tell me I shouldn't eat something because I was going to gain more weight or so much like it's real it's trauma really and yeah. even even adults I have so many clients who get so um you know stressed out before holidays or any experiences with certain family members because they know they're gonna say like what what kind of diet are you on what are you doing to lose weight are you really gonna eat that yeah. um so many unsolicited mm -hmm. comments about food and weight and it's yeah I definitely it affects people a lot. So, yeah. but what I always, I think um, the best thing when it comes to, to kids is really being as neutral as possible when it comes to food yeah. and weight and all of those things, because it does, it does damage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. That's something I struggle with. I used to struggle with not so much anymore with raising my son, you know, um, like what he wanting to get, you know, grow up and be big and strong and, and trying to refrain from like talking about food in that capacity or your, or anything, their appearance or anything like that, you know, um, instead of just encouraging, yeah. you know, just activity and things like that. So, um, it's, that's, that struggles really. Do you, have you, have, do you, do you have kids? Um, yeah, you, I have a three-year-old. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you're, I mean, setting those, um, I guess ideals for them early on. Right. Yeah. But it's, it's hard. I mean, she's only, she's only three, but I will say it is so much harder than I expected to be really neutral around food. And I am very neutral. <laughs> I'm very neutral around food and I have mm -hmm. a really good relationship with food now, mm -hmm. but it's, it's hard because you do like, of course you want to teach them, you know, what foods are going to be more nutritious for them and stuff, but it's hard. It, it's, it's definitely a delicate balance and you have to watch how you talk around certain foods, because if I let her have cookies all day long, she would <laughs> eat cookies all day long. Right. And that, and that's not because cookies are off limits in our house. They are very much not. And they're a regular thing in my house for sure, but she would <laughs> because cookies mm -hmm. are amazing. Um, and I think that that piece is hard is it's not just about how you talk about food and how you offer food. It's, it, it's like, it's so much for sure. Yeah. And uh, I've seen it happen in our school system, just from my son, he's nine about the teachers talking about the food he brought to school. Yes. And, I'm oh and, I'm my and he comes home and he's like, mommy, my teacher said that I had too much sugar in my, um, my lunchbox. I need to have more of something else. And I was like, are you kidding me? I get DMs about this all the time. <laughs> I get DMs about this all the time and it drives me crazy. It drives really? me crazy. Um, yeah. From, from schools who will send out things like we're learning about healthy and unhealthy foods this mm -hmm. week. Let's, let's not do that. You can, the thing that I think so many people miss, and this comes with, you know, any, even nutrition for adults is you can learn and prioritize healthy foods, like the more stereotypical healthy foods, like you can prioritize those things without paying any attention to, you know, the more indulgent foods, like you can put emphasis on fruits and vegetables without even thinking about what you're going to do with cookies. They're just there, moment. right? Yeah, they're just right. there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that would be such a more effective way to teach nutrition to little kids is just by yeah. talking about how great fruits and vegetables are and not yeah. even saying anything about the other foods. Yeah. Instead of they're instilling fear, food fear. Exactly. At such a young age. It's, it's crazy. 
Yeah, I had, I had someone DM me this one, um, from an old client and she was, would send like those little muffin packs to school with her, with her, Mm -hmm. um, daughter. And one day she sent her, I think with a bag of chips instead. So the muffins were happening for a while. And then she sent her back with a bag of chips and she got like an email or, um, they said something to her like, Oh, um, don't bring chips to school. Like that's not a healthy snack. And she was, you know, an old client and she was like, the chips and the muffins are like almost exactly the same nutritionally. And they're telling her like, don't eat chips, but you can bring the muffins every day. Like Mm. ridiculous. So, and that's, and unfortunately that's where so much misinformation starts at such a young age. Yes. Wow. Now schools don't have like a (laughs) new registered dietitian do they overseeing them or because i know they have like the school lunches and things like that but i think that comes from the government right yeah there's yeah. usually there's usually a dietitian involved somewhere who does you know some overview of the whole menu and things like that and there's probably some schools who do have dietitians involved but for the most part no that would be if they had like a dedicated rd on staff like like a school nurse too right like that that could stop a lot of that damage there i think too i mean i know it's not just so easy just to say oh that'd be awesome you know <laughs> practically speaking i know why it, it, it i know not that easy that that, right that would be that would be amazing i'm i'm just mm-hmm. thinking like oh my gosh they don't even pay teachers enough and then right. they True. would you know yeah. yeah but but it's but you're so right like how amazing would it be if there was an actual dietitian or someone qualified teaching yes. you know good nutrition information to kids it would yeah. be amazing yeah, because it starts there. It really does start in the classroom and at home. So just getting that information to the, at a young age is so vital. Mm-hmm. And, and now I'm thinking about this, it really pisses me off. Then we have things like the carnivore diet, which is completely like oh ruining people's relationships with vegetables of all things. Like, mm-hmm. I just can't believe we're in a, in a place in society where vegetables are are bad like the fruit thing you know obviously people will try to demonize that because sugar right but Mm -hmm. but vegetables you're going to try to make vegetables the culprit now Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's it's insane i I have no i have no tolerance for the carnivore diet neither do (laughs) i none i have none i don't i can't i i just i think it's absolutely it's absolutely ridiculous like we don't even have long-term solid research on keto, never right. mind carnivore. So it's mm. so it's, it is harmful. Like it is, it's, it's really scary. Yeah. You know, it's bad when I don't know what your opinion is probably, but I would like, I'd rather you do keto than carnivore, you know, like that's where we're at, you know, the worst of two evils, in my opinion, I'd rather you see not, do, not do any of them, but you know, <laughs> I know I, I agree. I think, I think you know, I'm, I'm not for either one of them, but yeah, carnivore is absolutely ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. It's, I thought when I first heard of it, I thought it was like this very, (laughs) yeah, I thought it was fake or I thought it was like a really tiny little thing. And then I quickly learned like, no, it is actually a pretty big movement and it's scary. Yeah. They have a lot of Facebook carnivore groups and I think Matt got into some and I actually got into some. We, infiltrate, we infiltrated behind enemy lines. The, reading, the post is like, oh, it's so unbelievably scary. Um, yeah, You guys are brave. Um, I couldn't handle it. People I don't interact. Their- I don't interact. Let me be clear. I, I just observe. I don't either. But people posting that they're losing their hair. What do I do? And then people are like, oh, just um, drink this or add salt to your water. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh yeah, I, I know oh. it's that's just more so- salt. That's the answer. Just more salt. Yeah. Then head wound, put some salt on it and it'll be fine. That's so scary. And I, you know, what is so scary about these really restrictive diets too? Like keto carnivore, anything that people are very likely not going to be on for very long is it again, it like, they'll do it for, you know, a couple weeks, a month, and then go back into free for all mode and then do it again for however much of time and then go into free for all mode. And then when you think of like overall quality of diet, it's terrible. And that is so harmful to health, you know, versus eating a little bit of sugar every day. <laughs> and you know right. what, what happens when they're going from that carnivore to that free for all, then the free for all is what's getting blamed. It's, it's, it's the vegetables and everything they're eating during that time, the fruit and everything. That's, that's the problem. It wasn't carnivore diet that made you go off the deep end and just eat everything in sight. 
Yes, exactly. 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 Like I, in that for so many different diets, that that's exactly it. Like you, you, you're in a place where you're so out of control around food and you feel like you can't make healthy changes to save your life. And you think that going back on a diet is the answer when really that was what you, what got you where you are. Mm -hmm. Don't even have the answer to the correct test either. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Wow. We, that we could talk about that for days. I'm sure. Uh, (laughs) um, what do you like to do for, for your movement and, and physical activity? Everybody's different. Everyone is different. I, um, I actually used to be a big CrossFitter, but I don't, I'm not anymore, but I used to be for like, for like seven years, that was my movement of choice. So I do like, I do like weightlifting and things like that. I don't do it quite as much as I would like to these days. Um, so now I'm real, I really like walking. I really like doing like kettlebell workouts and dumbbell workouts. Okay. That's like one of the nice things I feel like I took away from CrossFit is I can like easily pull something together and do it. Yeah. Um, but I really like walking and, but it's cold now and I have a toddler, <laughs> which makes things definitely challenging. Mm-hmm. So I just, I just, I have, um, I have had a Peloton spin bike for a while that I really like, and I actually just got a Peloton tread. So that, those what are my of movements that? of choice. A lot of, a lot of variety. <laughs> yeah. 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 V- variety is super important to me. I get so bored from doing the mm-hmm. same. I think a lot of people do, but I'm definitely someone who needs tons of variety in movement because I work, especially because I do all of my movement at home. So mm-hmm. if it's not exciting to me, I'm not going to do it. Sure. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. I'm uh, looking forward to my newest form of, of movement that's coming in the mail today is uh, the Oculus uh, Quest 2 virtual reality. Um, oh, um, so they have game. They have this one game. It's like a music dancing game. And, and so I'm going to give that a try. And I want to record like some videos on TikTok and Instagram um, documenting that because I think that would be a great way to get people moving, too. And that's fun. Uh, you're yeah. dancing around moving. You know, I've seen people um, after playing it for 30 minutes. They're just like they had a workout, sweat. you know, not that sweat. I love that workout, but they're moving and they're loving it. And I'm really excited for it for that reason. You'll I've have heard to, uh, good things about that. Yeah. My son has one, uh, Matt, you'll have to add him on there and we can play uh, beat saber against each other. Yes. <laughs> I love that. There we go. He got, he got one for Christmas and I'll be downstairs and I hear banging going around and he's up there <laughs> dancing with it. And <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll do that. We'll, we'll make that happen. <laughs> My son will be happy too. Cause he, he, he loves virtual reality. I think that's, yeah. that's a really big thing right now. I'm, I'm, I don't know how big it is in fitness yet from a, from that perspective, but I haven't seen too much of it, you know? Um, so I'm hoping that can change this year because typically this time of year, everybody's talking and the, the biggest fitness trend is always going to be like hit it's everything's hit, hit workouts, hit circuits. You got to be doing hit every year. We hear that, you know, hopefully this year it's, it changes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, so Jamie, uh, you got the, is the membership program, is that live right now or is that something you're getting ready to launch? Yes, it's, it's totally live. So it's always available. Gotcha. Um, I know you talked about a little bit more or, or, or already, but what, what more can you tell us about it? Sure. So it's like I had mentioned before, it's a self-paced program. It's really geared towards women. Like we've been kind of talking about women who have done the dieting thing, who have weight cycles, maybe a lot in their life, who are sick of all of that and really ready to build sustainable, healthy habits in their life without restriction, without dieting. Um, So it's a self-paced program. And we also have... So you get access to like all kinds of cool modules and things like that, that take you step-by-step step through everything. We have a private community and we do live calls every week. We do a challenge week every month in our community. So it's really fun and it's a nice way to connect with other people and to do things kind of at your own pace. Love that. Amazing. I love the community aspect of it too. Yeah. That's, that it's can't the best. Be- like with having a strong support system is is so crucial, no matter what you're, mm-hmm, where you are in sure. your life, what your goals are. Yeah, it's the best. I think, I think people are so surprised when they join a community like that, that there are so many people relate to the exact things that they're struggling mm-hmm. with. Everyone thinks they're just like, you know, struggling alone. by themselves. Yeah. And yeah. There's people out there that can help there, whether it's a coach or just a, an amazing community like that. Um, awesome. 
where, yeah. where can people um, learn more about your, your, your uh, membership course and, and working with you or um, on your socials? Sure. So um, you can find me on Instagram at the balanced nutritionist and it's the dot balanced dot nutritionist. TikTok is the same thing except no period. So it's just the balanced nutritionist. And um, if you are interested in the membership, you would find it in the link in my Instagram bio. Awesome. Amazing. Awesome, Jimmy. Well, thank you so much for coming on and chatting with us. Yes. Thank you so much. That was super fun. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. Well, absolutely. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. <laughs> All right, Beth. That one was, that was fun. That was awesome. I loved talking about um, the school system and things yeah. like that. Um, because I, like I said, like we talked about, I think it, it starts there. I mean, it really. Does. And in the home when we are young, when the children are young. Yeah, we can't rely on the education system to do everything for us, but apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, apparently it definitely not. does start with us. You know, yeah. um, we can we can set good examples for our kids. And that's one of the reasons why I like to encourage uh, movement and just all these healthy behaviors, you know, like the, the daily mm -hmm. walks, like that's something you can do with your kids when, you know, it granted, of course, if it's not snowing and freezing. Uh, <laughs> um but that's something you can do with your kids. It's fun for them because they're spending time with you, quality time with you, and you're getting your yeah. exercise in and so are they. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It was, yeah, I mean, that's, it's reaffirming too, right? Like the things that we talk about, the things that everybody that's mm -hmm. been on our show talks about is just, you know, the balanced lifestyle and, and getting back to the fundamentals, getting back to the fundamentals and repairing our relationship with food and, and mm -hmm. exercise and mindset and sleep mindset, and mindset, all the stuff you don't want to fucking hear about. Yeah. You know what we need to do next? Um, get a mindset coach on to talk with us. Yes. I'll, yes. So I, I, what about Mel? Uh, yeah, Mel. We, first, we, right? we, yeah, absolutely. Get Mel cup of cup of Mel on TikTok. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I know, of, I know a guy too. Um, Kieran Fox, he was my, he was my mindset, uh, mentor for, for a longest oh, time. There you go. We can yeah, definitely get him too. too. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. For sure. What is, um, new in your world then? What is new? Hmm. It's just, it's a busy time right now. I know you're feeling it too. Uh, I'm about to hire some coaches or I'm, that's my next step. Awesome. Um, and my friend Hunter is going to be helping me out more with a lot of things. So I'm working on a, um, having a resource library for my clients, um, which I haven't had. So that's cool. He's going to work on that for me. Um, and I'm actually working on one of those right now too, for my clients. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, and then I'll have a coach's resource library as well. So it's oh. kind of things that, that we are going to have in the works. Yeah. So when, as I hire more coaches, there'll be a like a resource library for them. So you can, um, yeah, yeah, that makes onboarding a lot easier, right? Yes, yes, yes. So a lot of good stuff, like, uh, you know, um, expanding my business, which is scary and, scary and exciting at the same, at time, the same right? time. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really busy and, uh, being more entrepreneurial. <laughs> it's yeah. I'm, that's my hat this year. Pretty much. You know, I've right? been, I've been reducing my client load, my one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. client load because yeah. as my, you know, as I grow, with my business, I can't take on that many clients as much as right. I'd love to. Um, right. So um, with that, you know, kind of growing my coaching team as well, I'm getting ready to hire somebody new. I can't wait to announce that. And once we iron out the details, so yep. yeah, That's it's gonna awesome. be a lot of fun. I'd love to talk to you another time about how you onboard your coaches and what that looks like, because um, that's something new to me. Because yeah. I have a, do have a coach, but you know, he's my friend and we kind of do it in our own like way. We communicate really well, but I need systems or I need like a, how yeah. do I map this out? You know, like sure. how do I figure, figure out who goes to that coach and who goes to that coach and just, yeah, that's, that's a good, that's a good point. Uh, important part of it too, for sure. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, no, we can definitely talk about that. I'm happy to chat. Yay. Yay. Um, Yay. I, uh, TikTok live on Friday? Yeah. TikTok live on Friday. Yep. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to go in one hour. I'm getting my booster. So, um, mm. hopefully it doesn't knock me down for like a day. I don't, I can't afford that right now. So I was okay <laughs> with my booster. I, yeah. None of the back, none of them really affected me too much. Um, yeah. That's good. Really after the, really after bad. my second vaccine, um, I had, I got sick the next day. I was, I Did had flu-like flu symptoms the next day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But 
Well, good luck with that drink. Take ibuprofen before you go. Um, I think the most thing was my arm hurt m the most it did out of all of them. Yeah, that's, uh, so that, I, I can handle that. I can handle that. I'll, I'll, okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm hydrated as fuck all the time anyway. So <laughs> hydrated as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's hydrate or dehydrate. Hydrated as fuck, you guys. Let's go. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. Good wrap up. Awesome. All right, Beth, talk to you soon. Ciao. And that is a wrap for this episode of Cut the Crap with Beth and Matt. Did we help you cut through the bullshit? We want to know. Send us a DM on Instagram and share your thoughts. We'd love to hear them. And if you did find this one helpful, why not share this episode with a friend? I know I personally love it when a friend shares their favorite podcast with me along with a text saying, Oh my God, you have got to check out this podcast. You'll love it. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss future episodes.